Today is the 61st anniversary of the day we got married in Kingston on Thames, England during the war. 61 years with the same woman. My God. Thank God. I was born, raised in Ottawa. Why I went to England was because the war broke out. All during the war, one of our main diversions was dancing. And so girls of my age, 17, 18, um, we would love to go to a dance hall. And I can remember walking into the uh, dance hall and uh, looking around and seeing uh, a dark-haired, naturally a brunette, obviously, in a red silk dress, sitting on the chair by the wall. So I walked over and asked her to dance. We danced the first dance, we danced the second dance, we danced the whole evening long. I just never dated anyone else, and neither did she. And so one day I realized that uh, this was it. I had to do something, so I asked her if she would marry me. And one of my silly girlfriends said to me, Jean, you could do much better. And I remember turning around and looking at her and said, what I have is pure gold, and I know it. As I said it out loud to her, I knew um, I would never change my mind about that man, and he, he would always be my number one. Our wedding day was a little different for each of us. You couldn't go into a shop and buy a wedding dress because all your clothes were rationed. Nobody had enough coupons for such luxuries as wedding dresses. So my mother came home with the butcher's daughter's wedding dress. I put it on, it fit absolutely perfectly. We got through the ceremony and we got outside and all your sergeants behaved absolutely beautifully. I was too overcome with emotion, I couldn't say anything. She has often said, you know, it was an exciting time, but you never knew when you separated, when you were going to see each other again. You made the most of every minute. You would hug, you would kiss, as if it was the last time. There was bombing raids, and I might have been posted somewhere that I couldn't tell her and uh, where I was going. Then that's when the heartbreak starts. I remember every lonely day. And I also remember that the postman was uh, the person that you looked forward to seeing most of all. The letters were definitely a lifeline, no doubt about it. And when you got letters, you usually got a bunch. So the, you carefully sorted them by date and then sort of rationed them out to make them last as long as possible. You didn't sort of read them all at once. Love made the world go round and if you were happily in love, it made everything that was sad about the war possible, you know? I had something to stay alive for during the war. Having met Jean, my life wouldn't have been the same. He was gone in Italy over a year, and I was um, fast asleep in bed one morning in Kingston on Thames when I heard someone running up the stairs, and I knew the footsteps, and it was George. He had um, been instructed to go back to Canada, and so he had two weeks in England. And during that time, he arranged for my passage to Canada, and then he disappeared. He was gone. Um, but the Red Cross contacted me and uh, told me that I was to be prepared to leave my home, leave my friends, leave my family. My father said, you are not going alone, my girl. So he came up to London with me and he walked six paces behind me. And a person in Red Cross uh, uniform came up to me, said my name, Jean Spear, and I said, yes, she said, follow me. And I turned around to follow her. And as I did, I turned back to my father and, and waved, waved to him. He, he waved, waved to me. And, uh, you know, he had no idea where I was going. 
I had no idea when I would, if I would see him again. And this was in December 1944, and the sea was gray, it was miserable, the U-boats were around, and it was the most miserable voyage of my entire life, <laughs> because I was so deadly seasick. Landed eventually in Halifax. I left from Pier 21, she arrived at Pier 21. A man came running towards me with, uh, with his great coat flying, and I, I suddenly realized it was George. <laughs> he wrapped the overcoat around me, and uh, we just stood there and hugged and hugged and hugged, because I didn't know he was there. I had uh, thought that he was, he'd gone back to Italy and uh, didn't know how long it would be before I would see him again, but uh, there he was. So into the station where I met his family and that Christmas had to be the most wonderful, wonderful Christmas of any Christmas in my life. As far as my parents' relationship is concerned, the 61st is much like the 60th, which is much like the 59th, which is much like the 2nd. It's a celebration of everything that's come about since. The happiness of our marriage, the two super kids that we have, with partners that we love, and then with each grandchild that came along, it meant more love in my life. It's really nice every time I see them you know, still being affectionate after 60 years, you know, kissing and hugging each other. And it's, it's really, really nice, and it, it gives me hope. I think that uh, romance is most important, absolutely imperative in any relationship on a continuing, everlasting basis. I'm so fortunate in having a partner who translates romance into letters into notes, into red roses, into a bottle of champagne on important occasions. One occasion, of course, that comes to mind uh, was their 60th wedding anniversary. Jean had made a replica of the dress that she wore when she first met George in 1940. And she came in across the room with the red dress on, and he had his jacket on from the war and just relived the whole moment. Love was the mover, the motivator. It was what made the world go round for us. She has totally enriched my life, and it would not have been the same without her. I've appreciated him every single day. <laughs> Happy 61st, dear. <laughs> same to you. That wasn't a very fancy ending. No, it wasn't. <laughs>
And today is the 61st anniversary of the day we got married in Kingston on Thames, England during the war. 61 years with the same woman. My God. Thank God. I'm a native of Ottawa. I was born, raised in Ottawa. And why I went to England.